Saturday, April the 20th, I think. Back in the park. Different area, but uh, different but the same. Doing a bit of maintenance here today. We're at one of the uh, one of the older sites here, which is combined site recent and uh, and generational site, I guess you would call it. So we're just taking a few through a few relics here that's discarded. And the first thing I noticed was old handbar for I guess was log for logging moose. Both sides. I guess they used a bit of old leather or a bit of strapping. And you know the worst thing about this when you add occupancy for so many years, there's all kinds of pieces of stuff that's left behind. But we're gonna do our best now to clean all this up. One thing really caught my eye was this range head. As you can see, man, it's in excellent shape. Look, low homemade bread. Still got the chain on there, look. That's in excellent shape, if anybody's looking for one. Uh, I'm not sure the dimensions of it, but it's for the, uh, your standard 1945 range. <laughs> That's a mid-sized one, I think. So there's some holes in that stuff that was used for rooting water down from the brook to the cabin. Now that's a bit newer, but here's the old stove that was in a teepee slash, I guess it was a wigwam teepee type thing that they had, my uncle had actually. I can say no last names, but uh, Gary and Morley. Shout out that cooked many a good meal, and I'd say, like we said before, to root through the ashes and stuff, you'll probably find uh, something to date the site. And here we have, uh, I guess, when they used screws after the next generation, the screws were here, so it was a part of a bunk sled. So that's probably within the 60s, 70s, somewhere around here for screws. But anyway, before the rolls came down here, the, uh, out here now, was the, we're actually having a fire now. We're gonna clean up this site now, so we can do a bit more of a survey here. But the teepee was right here somewhere. There's Brook. So the teepee was along here somewhere. So we're gonna clean all this up like you say now and uh, move the holders and get the brush down. So we're having a little fire there today. And we're two birds with one stone type thing. We're cleaning out our bit of brush. And we're cleaning up this site. There was a, uh, a big blow down there. A big white spruce came down. So the top fell right across the brook and damned the brook. A lot of trout was up to this brook, eel. So we removed the notch of that. Beautiful brook. All the massive birches. There's three big maple over there. Beautiful spot. So this was no doubt why there was a uh, a little settlement back in the day when there was, you know, trapping was top notch over this way. Especially for the lynx. The lynx are still here now. We got one. <laughs> I'm going to say he's probably 20 years old or more. And the same old guy that comes around every spring. So, rabbits are not abundant, but they're eating something, I guess. I apologize for the wind because it's, once again, it's going a storm here. So we're burning up a bit of stuff here and a few old pallets that we had. And cleaning up around the cabin and stuff. Walk up here now, I had the wind a little bit. So that's our water pipe. 
It goes all the way up the brook here. It's not hooked up yet. That was another job for today, but I don't think we're going to get around to it because we had minus six or seven last night. So, like you say, we're still in the uh, latter part of April, so we're going to wait now, I guess, for another week until it hooks up the water. So that's the main pipe hooks on to the larger points plate comes down from the dam here and this is a nice place by in the in fall of the year all the maple that's all maple tree here turns nice and red beautiful trout from up to their book you can see the spiny habitat there wonderful stuff so what we do in that time we uh Here's our dam for our water and our inlet pipe. So when the trout's coming, you see we got a little notch there. And just side the brook. And I make sure that that's wide open for the trout migration, right? And I actually, I actually goes into this pond with this one of those. And man, I tell you, this uh, beautiful supply of uh, Rookies in there. Yeah, so we came down this morning with the best intentions to do all this, but so we, 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 we got most of it done. We got most of our brush removed and tin gas and chainsaw. And all that nice stuff. Cleaned up the cabin, put in some wood, brought down two loads of wood. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a new one. Instead of cutting wood at the cabin to bring it home, you're uh, bringing it from the house. But uh, one of the reasons why we were doing a video in a while was then they're doing some renovations at the old garage in the back, 14 by 20 shed. So I cut a door in the back to put the side by side in. Anyway, it was full of wood, so we took all the wood out. And anyway, it's a long story, but we got the job done. So the 10, 12 year old dry wood is brought down here now next couple loads some nice but we got that sun today and uh, just straight across out through that woods there's a little steady and all big birch you can hear the hear the growth out there drumming away we were talking about it earlier people mentioned uh, the grouse how can they just drum when they're mating you know but the grouse They'll drum all year round. I guess it's a, it's a way of communication. I guess sometimes you hear them drumming in the wintertime. They're not buried up in snow. So we had to do some of the clearing of our driveway here. All the big burr came down and with the snow we're getting. We got one of our slipways put together. The other one there now is just waiting. It's nice to pre-drill it in before you uh, put some together. Because they're out in 30 degree heat on the beach. Some people put stain that on, but dollars now for a gallon of seeds just to be baked in the sun. And then we got old Charlie at the garage. Grandfather's old 200 M, 1984, a downshift, yeah, 84. If there's an odometer on that, it will frighten the living. Do you know what, are you? His grandfather used it, my father bought it, then I got my hands on it when I was about, I think it was three years old. Round and round the cabin until I was about, well, 20. Until I got old enough to get down the house and convince father to bring it home because it was always up the cabin. So then, you know, growing up in the high school years, it wasn't really treated the best. So when I was finished with my brother got it, so that's a different story. Then it was, uh, I think one time he had a couch on the back, and a couple of people on the back of the couch. So anyway, she got, she done her duty. So we put her in the garage and, uh, you know, I've never done a full restoration, just put her back the way that she was supposed to be in regards to mechanical and operation and stuff. So yeah, she's there. Not sure if she's gonna run for 
us now, but you should. a bit but like I say rings were all done but the cylinder's worn and that's the to the ring so come on man. yeah once again we got a southerly wind nice a little bit warmer robins are back going around flabby doing the thing squirties here somewhere going is some peanuts. So I rope next week now to get over to one of the special sites again and update you on the uh, real interesting stuff that's coming up now for the special special sites. Not the same winter time when you go around and try to get these special sites because you can't really see what's underneath the snow and But there's some uh, some of these sites you go into almost taxi, you know what I mean? You see there's some places that the mugs were left on the table and people left because well they claim it was ghosts and stuff like that. No, maybe. They're all with us I guess, but <laughs> there's one guy over there that had a cabin across the lake from me. He was in the cabin all by himself one night. This is way back in the day, you know. You know, you were a rabbit kitchen, you got 60, 70, 80, 100 rabbits, and then you came back and you sold them. That was, a, that was a, you know, half of your income. But anyway, I guess he caught too many rabbits because uh, one night he was all by himself and went to sleep. And he said every rabbit he ever caught came back at nighttime and was around the cabin, chewing on it and bawling, screeching. Well, who, ever know, who knows what it was, but the next day he left his mug on the table. And he left the cabin, and he never came back after. So, there must have been something. These woodsmen, <laughs> back in the day, they wouldn't have scared of bears, they wouldn't have afraid of lynx, or, you know, no coyotes, but they wouldn't have afraid of nothing. But something spooked that guy. The big rabbit they ever caught came back and was looked by the cabin spew on it. That night, he said. Yeah. Maybe some bad home brew. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to do uh, another couple trips now to keep cleaning up a uh, little spot here until we're finished. Because it's getting a bit windy, so a few pallets now. We'll burn them next time because it's going to be a little bit of a mess. we got to rake that in clean it up. And we're close by the brook, so we got to make sure that nothing gets in the brook. Go we'll look after that and maybe take Charlie for a little ride up on top of the hill somewhere or stretch your legs. Thanks for watching guys. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. We'll get back to you on the special sites. Site 3. Oh,